All right, so this is the first assignment that we did in class for Photoshop. We are going to open and go into file. And we're going to go all the way down to automate right here. And all the way down to photo merge. This just merges how many other photos that you have together. So I'll click on that. Keep this as files and keep it as auto. Go into browse and look for those photos. So put them in order from one, two, and three. So cabin one, cabin two, and cabin three. Well, let's do that again. Cabin one, two, three, and open. Now press OK. You're going to get that. It's loading a little bit. <laughs> okay, and you're going to get these weird lines. I personally don't like working with these lines. So as you can see, you won't be able to get rid of them like that. So what I do is I go into view and clear guides. This will remove those blue lines in between your, your photo. So, and they're gone. As you can see here, you have some random excess at the top and you don't want that. So basically, what you're going to want to do first is go on to any layer. So click on it, doesn't matter what. Right click. And here you can do merge layers or merge visible. These are kind of the same, but it's kind of more preference. I would say merge layers because <clears throat> for me, merging visible has given me a bit more issues. So I'm going to click on merge layers. This will keep it as one entire photo. Also, a helpful tip if you guys want to move the photo around and when you're zooming in, press the space bar. And this will be able to grab your photo. And you'll be able to grab the specific parts of your photo. So that's a helpful hint. And of course, the if you let's say you can't see your controls, so your transform controls, you can do Control T, and you'll be able to see your controls. There's also a option at the top sometimes, which is not showing right now, where it gives you the option to check mark if you want to see the controls. So we're just going to, there you go, I'm happy with that. So now she's going to want you to crop the photo. And here I know there were a few issues with cropping. So as you can see, mine just automatically conforms to the photo, but I am aware that there are some people who did not have that where their Photoshop was actually doing something like this. And then they couldn't move it around. So because I'm not too sure what settings you guys have, I'm going to give a few ways to troubleshoot this. Yeah, that was wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> so sometimes if you hold shift, you can keep the size dependent on how you need it, but it doesn't work in this case. So shift might help, it might not. Or in this case, if it looks like this, you pull the sides. So wherever there are these protruding, or they, these protruding lines within the thinner lines, you're going to use and it'll give you a little transform thing here it shows you to go left to right so then you can go left to right here same thing here up down in this case you're going to want to shorten it a little bit on this side as well we'll do that and at the bottom Now here you can press the check mark 
if you're satisfied with it. So it'll look like that. Now go back onto your grab tool so you're not just working with the chance, the, whatchamacallit, the, the crop tool. And you, she's going to want you to put a border. So here you're going to go, I believe it is, is it? I'm doing this without the instructions, so I'm just kind of doing what I think might make sense, but also what I kind of remember. So I'm just going to find that. Okay, so it's early in the morning. I'm tired. <laughs> so I'll go to image. You're going to do canvas size, not image size. If you do image size, you're going to turn that photo into, as she likes to call it, itsy bitsy or teeny tiny. <laughs> so go to canvas size. Uh, the biggest issue that we had here, which a student had actually pointed out, was that even though I have it right now, you're going to have to make sure that you have relative clicked because that will ensure that the photo stays the same size, but the canvas does not. Or well, the canvas stays the same size, but the photo does not. So you're gonna put this in inches, it'll stay in inches, and you're gonna change it to 1.5. Both will be 1.5. You can click enter or just okay. I'm gonna click enter here. And as you can see, you have that around the border. Now you're going to, let's, let's change your color first. So click on the foreground or the thing at the side that says color. Um, I'm gonna pick, I wanna pick a blue. So I'm gonna do, okay. So the paint bucket thing, it will be on the side where the toolbars are. It'll look like a paint bucket. So paint tool, sometimes it won't look like that. So it might look like gradient tool or 3D drop tool. You're just going to want to, you don't actually have to right click and hold. You can actually just click it normally and hold. <laughs> and make sure that paint bucket tool is selected. And now you have your color. You're just going to click in the spaces that don't have the photo. And that'll give you the blue border. You guys already know how to save this. And that is, that is basically what she wants you guys to do. Hope that helped. <laughs>